Just as warm weather brings blue crabs out of the mud, that great gathering basin that is the Chesapeake Bay watershed becomes outdoor classroom to eager learners of all ages. With experiences designed uniquely for both students and teachers, CBF's education program is fueled by a powerful idea. You gotta be there. Yeah. Developing critical thinking skills in young minds is a cornerstone of the field education program for student groups. The title, what's happening here? The, the water is being pulled yeah. in and out by the moon's gravity. Well Ooh, done. Yeah. Wow. Mysteries abound in the natural world, and students working in groups are challenged to solve them. Often the path to a solution requires team building, verbal and written communication skills, as well as the use of math tools. And topics for investigation go beyond environmental science to include local history, culture, and art. My kids are inner city kids, so they don't get the chances. They don't have the resources. The field trips are just invaluable to us. We are going to just sit here and appreciate what you are witnessing right at this moment. Kids need to know that art can be found anywhere around them. Just the beauty of the sunsets out here where they might not be able to see that in town. Yeah, kids have many different learning styles and a lot of, of the students are, are hands-on learners. He is more of, a, more of a visitor to the Bay. He's going to be leaving soon. This guy... You know, you get the textbook and you read section one in chapter three and then you answer the review questions and then you turn to section two. The children simply don't retain it the way they do when they have actually physically been in the environment. I mean, how do you explain what a pipe fish looks like? How do you explain what an isopod is? I mean, you have to see it. You have to touch it. You have to have been a part of pulling it out of the bay before you really understand how all those little creatures in the grasses are connected. What kind of water we got here? Brackish. Brackish? It's a mix of what? Salt and When you dump all your catch out in a great big bin and you start picking through them, right, to keep the keepers and get rid of the little ones, that's called culling your catch. Next grandpa, one, two, three! You see all the lights start to go off and the aha moments and their faces light up. If they can touch it, then they can understand it. Those are damselfly larvae. See how they have the three prongs? It's amazing what young children can learn. All right, I want you guys to figure it out. They are sponges at that age. They are not worried about being cool and looking great in their outfits. You know, everything's very serious in my county. It's all about curriculum standards. But I also think there is a way to learn. There's a way to make it fun at the same time. It's a very important combination. How far down do you think the soil goes? The students don't even realize that they're learning. You know, they're having so much fun. They're so involved with all of the activities. There's just a whole window of opportunities and lots of teachable moments. I'm learning what a watershed is because I've always heard it, but I never really understood. You hold it like that, they cannot bite you. Any other Once you get out here, the Bay Foundation staff, they're in charge. The teacher does not have to know about all the fish and all the activities. You don't have to be the expert when you're out here. I am not an outdoorsy person, but I have become one in the last couple of days. This experience hits on science standards, geography, social studies standards, language arts. Pretty much every single life science SOL is directly touched upon out here. Predator prey, ecosystem, biomes, habitats. We can talk about habitats in the classroom, or we can we can look at habitats. Yeah, that's a huge one. That one might be. Of course, the greater value in providing students an outdoor experience in the watershed is when that experience is leveraged into the classroom. This is where a teacher who has participated in CBF's professional development program can make all the difference. When they asked us, okay, where is your knowledge level? And straight up was, I totally am on board. I'm 100% get this. I'm kind of, and I'm, I was like, I'm gonna be honest. I'm right here at the beginning. For any teacher who's gonna bring their students out, it is invaluable if, if they come on a teacher training trip. You know better what's gonna happen on the trip. Uh, and then you can start kind of enticing your students and, and anticipation is often half the fun. That's the mummy chog. Scoop up like So if we start talking about mummy chogs in the classroom, then they come out here and wow, voila, you have a mummy chog. So. Teachers gain not only a valuable baseline understanding of the workings of the watershed and its living creatures, 
but also some real-world techniques for integrating environmental science into the core subject areas of language arts, math, and social studies. It's been an incredible opportunity for me, and it's a real gift for me. I feel like I'm on vacation and inspired at the same time. There's a plethora of materials, uh, and their passion for the environment, the passion for the future of the children that we deal with is intense. And they're always giving us ideas about things. It's really nice to watch others and learn from them. They've all uh, shared something that I will take and use as a teacher. Fresh caught from the Chesapeake Bay. Whether you're teaching seventh grade or taking seventh grade, it's hard to miss the signs of an environment at risk upstream and down, traditions and livelihoods, born of a once healthy and productive watershed, are now threatened. Participants in the CBF program confront these tough issues and wonder about their own roles in shaping the Bay's future. They're going to be learning a lot from me now. I can promise you that. But more than anything else, I want them at the end of the unit say, what can we do to help? You can't submerge yourself in, in the natural environment and not take that and um, cherish it because you've been able to experience it and know that it, it exists. So when you go back to the city and you get caught up in the fast-paced life there, you can remember and know that there's other places. Even my little 10-year-olds really understand the Bay and their connection to it by the time they've finished with one of these trips. Last night we were out at the more knowledge you can give a child, the better choices they can make. These children have taken this information home, they've acted on it, they're taking shorter showers, they're turning the lights off on their parents. I believe in my heart of hearts that they do turn out to be better citizens when they get older, that they do develop that sense of stewardship. Oh, got the soft trail. That was in its shell oh, yeah. probably a half hour ago. I've never had one student that comes back that hadn't been changed in some way. We all went through that mud, and there's a, a true sense of accomplishment on the other side of that. Oh, one, one.